all the sessions are being recorded. Um, so if you have missed a session, um, you should be able to pick it up um, at some point down the line um, on Work Avenue's YouTube um, channel, um, alternatively on our website as well. So I think at three minutes past one, I'm going to sort of um, welcome you to the final closing session of defining your second career. Uh, we've, we've, we've traveled a long way this morning. Um, I believe and hope that all my colleagues, and there's, there's a lot of people on this group now, um, but I believe and hope that all my sessions, all my colleagues are on this session with me. And we wanted to have a final session um, to allow people um, the opportunity to um, ask any questions they wanted to do, but also so we could bring the session to a, a nice close rather than everyone just drifting off into lunch, although I'm sure we're all feeling a little bit peckish right now. Um, so that's, that, that's certainly what I'm going to do. Now, I did ask for questions to be submitted in advance. So I'm going to start off with some of those questions that have been asked. And I know there's a few more questions gone on the chat here, but I'm, I'm gonna try and go in sort of order they were submitted. So I'm going to deal with some of the questions um, that were submitted um, in advance of today's um, event. And one of our delegates has asked, um, I've worked in retail for the last 30 years, and now I would really like to work in a not-for-profit, in the not-for-profit sector um, for the next stage of my working life. Um, I've got transferable skills and, and um, that I think would add value, but obviously it's really hard in the pandemic, and I'm worried that it's just not possible um, at the moment to do just that. Is there any advice you can give me? Um, well, I'm going to ask my colleague, Melanie, who ran our transferable skills session, to unmute herself and answer that question first of all, if that's okay, Mel. Oh, sure. Um, good, good afternoon now, everybody. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yes, so, I mean, that's obviously a, um, quite a common um, concern at the moment, is how do I move from a sector that really isn't um, the same as it, as, as it was? Um, and I think if, you're, if you've been in retail, um, it could be that you could move to another area of retail. So, um, for example, um, the supermarket sector is, um, is, is, is doing really well at the moment, um, plus the suppliers to the, to, to the supermarkets and to, to lots of other areas. So you may have transferable skills that can move directly within retail. Um, but I know that you asked to specifically to move to the not-for-profit sector. Um, and so then it's looking at what are your transferable skills? And I don't know what role you had within, within retail, um, but assuming it's sort of what, what we think of as standard retail, which is sort of serving, serving customers and looking after their needs and um, being as helpful as you can and, and, and also sales. Um, the one that springs to mind is customer service. So, there's, so there are some really good customer service skills there. Um, and it would be really worthwhile having a look at some charity jobs and seeing how those, how those customer service um, skills will transfer um, directly over to, to, to a job in the not-for-profit sector. Um, and the way to do that is to think about some examples of when you've used um, customer service skills and the results, what's, what, what you've done and the results that, that, that um, have, have come out of that. And then thinking about, okay, how can I transfer those into the not-for-profit sector and be able to um, serve customers within that sector well? We're thinking about which area of the not-for-profit sector, which areas interest you? Which charities do really sort of like um, uh, your, you really have perhaps an affiliation with or an interest in so that you can write a compelling cover letter that says, I'm really interested in working for your organisation because, um, and then talking about some of those transferable skills within your CV as well. Brilliant. Thank you very, very much, Mel. Um, another question that was submitted in advance, and these questions are very, very random because people submit it according to their own agendas. But obviously, if it's interesting to one person, I'm pretty sure it's going to be interesting to another one as well. Um, the question is actually, it's about LinkedIn. So Adam, get ready, because I'm going to ask you to answer this question, please. Adam Katz, who delivered our, our LinkedIn session just now. Um, and, and our questioner, Rosalind, asks, is there um, any way of making the LinkedIn profile ageless or at least pass partially ageless? My ageless CV mentions my uh, government experience where relevant, but I can't add any jobs to LinkedIn without dates. And that period of time was far too long ago. Adam. 
So, uh, it's, it's a good question. So LinkedIn is not your, it's not the same as your CV. And mm. again, you, so it's kind of your, your advertising board, if you like. So I would you know, g- go back however far you want with your uh, career history, however, however far back you feel comfortable with, but then you kind of got those sections above it, kind of your about section. And that's where you can really hone in on the stuff that you've done. And to be honest, most people, as long, if you're using the right keywords so that you're getting found by the right people, uh, and then you build that section to talk about the results you've got and the things that you've done, which are relevant for the job you want to do, uh, then that's a, a really effective way of uh, making it timeless, uh, but also making it results orientated and making it interesting in terms of what value you add to, to other people. Lovely, thank you. And another questioner has asked in advance, um, basically, um, I, I, I've I just completed a degree, but I'm an older person having just completed a degree. Um, but so many sort of graduate jobs, internships and entry level schemes are set up for 22 year olds, um, you know, who, who are at a very different stages of their lives. Um, what do you suggest for someone like me who's actually in my 40s in terms of just graduating? Um, my colleague, I'm going to ask, um, I'll put him on the spot here. I'm going to ask Richard Linden, my colleague, if he'd like to kick off with this one. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Hi, Richard. Um, so, uh, so look, plenty of people do degrees later in life. It's, it's becoming more and more common now. Um, it doesn't mean, um, I know absolutely what you mean, that um, most of the grad schemes uh, and the entry level jobs after doing a degree are younger people. But there's plenty of examples of people that have got jobs by um, uh, you know, after their degree, going straight in at that degree level. Um, so it's not for a minute to say that you shouldn't be applying for them. Um, but I think for, for yourself, just and, and for anyone in, at this time, you just have to make as much use as you possibly can out of networking, out of using your LinkedIn, uh, making your CV look as amazing as it possibly can look, um, apply for as many jobs as you can. Um, you know, at the moment, uh, well, over the years, we've always said quality, not quantity when you're uh, when you're applying for jobs. But now I think more so than ever, it's quality and quantity. Um, so I definitely don't think um, you, sh- you should be thinking you're you're well up against it. OK, it's difficult. But um, if you apply all of that and network as hard as you can um, and apply to as many jobs in, in, in you know, in quality as you can, um, then I, I don't you know, I don't see any reason why you shouldn't stand as good a chance as anyone. Lovely. Thank you very, very can much. I, can I just add to that as well, which is, Please um, go ahead. Yeah. For, I don't know if you're on the session that, that, that I ran, but if from a career change point of view, um, if you can use LinkedIn to find people who have made a similar transition to you, either from, you know, companies that you've worked for or, or competitor companies, you can put that in the search feature and then talk, put it in the companies that they want to work for and the career that you want to do. And then you can start approaching those individuals and say, how did you make that transition and look to build up relationships with those people, learn the lessons from them. And that, that can be a really powerful way of building up your, uh, a, a very relevant and targeted network. Lovely. Thank you very, very much, Adam. Um, I have a question directed for Amanda here, who I can see is on the session. So Amanda, get ready to unmute yourself, please. Um, From Fernanda, and she's asked, can Amanda please quickly explain again what the difference is between a recruitment agency and a headhunter? Sure. Hi, Fernanda. Um, In theory, for a candidate, it shouldn't really matter. But the difference, obviously, is from the client's perspective, is how they want a job filled. So either they'll ask a headhunter to help them um, almost search under the radar, whereas a client may ask a recruitment agency uh, to help them fill a job, in which case they will have, the recruitment agency will uh, advertise the role and people will respond to that advert. So it's more about passive and reactive um, searching on behalf of the business rather than the candidate. But normally a headhunter would approach um, a candidate looking for a job, whereas Uh, a recruiter would wait to be contacted via the job that's been advertised. Does that answer the question? I think so. Yes, thank you very, very much. Thank you. Now, I'm going to, I've got another question here. The question is asked to uh, remain anonymous, but it's actually for my colleague, um, Joe Sadie. Joe, Joe, I hope you're on the call somewhere, and if you could uh, prepare to unmute yourself. Um, And the questioner asks, after so many job rejections, I'm thinking of starting a business. Do you think I will have more success? Well, I really hope so. Um, And we are here to help you with whatever your idea is. So definitely as a first step, um, two first steps, 
go back and look at the recording of the session that I just ran, unless you were on it already. And then please feel free to book a one-to-one -one with me and we can talk about your idea in, um, obviously, you know, there's, there's so many different business ideas, but please feel free to come and talk to me um, or my colleague Kim about your business idea. Be delighted to, to help. And there's no reason why you shouldn't, but it, 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 it is, it's challenging to run your own business as well as to find a job, but there's no reason why you shouldn't be successful at that. So definitely Lovely. worth investigating. Thank you very, very much, Joe. Um, Jackie has asked a question. Adam, it's for you again. Um, question for Adam. You invited us to follow you. I'd be pleased to, but is that the same as connecting or something different on LinkedIn? Uh, Adam, it's could you share that for, with it for everyone, obviously? And yeah, you know, let me... Can I share? Oh, I'm not sure if I can uh, share my screen. Uh, you probably can if I... No, I can't. Not. Okay. Just one so, second. You, you can now. Okay. Um, Okay, so here's my profile. So I clicked on my profile. Um, let, me, let me look up someone else. Let me find someone else who I'm not following. Yeah. Um, so I can click on Ian Matthews, this guy, um, and then click on the more button. And I'm already following him, but there's a follow unfollow. So that just means you're not connected to him, but your content, his content will appear in your feed. Lovely, thank you very, very much. Very good. Um, okay, and uh, we've had a few more questions and people have asked for them to uh, remain um, anonymous. So, so forgive me for not mentioning the person's name, um, but somebody has asked, you know, we're in a very big recession now with the, with the pandemic and everything. Um, it's even harder um, to navigate your way successfully to a second career. Um, are there any sort of overarching, overriding top tips that you can share? Um, so that's a very big question, very, very topical for now. Um, I'm going to um, throw that one at my colleague, Yael Solomons, to start off with, if she doesn't mind, and we'll kick it around a little bit. Um, yes, hello, everybody. Um, I guess I'll start off myself from the perspective of speaking um, to the employers, because that's what I do here at Work Avenue, about their perception of um, candidates who are coming, looking for a second career using their transferable skills. Um, I'd say there's no one answer to that. All employers um, are different. Um, I do speak to a lot of employers who are open to looking at um, applicants and candidates who would like to do something different, who have transferable skills from a previous career and would like to move in to doing something else. So I'd say um, looking at it from the employer's perspective, if you have a career idea that you want to go into or you see a job you'd like to apply for, the best thing you can do is try and shape yourself as much as possible in line with what the employer would want. So that is things like um, looking at a job spec, looking at your CV and trying to demonstrate your match as closely as possible. Um, things like writing a compelling cover letter to be able to show um, why you'd like to make this career change and that will hopefully take you to the interview. Um, another tip um, which has been mentioned many times this morning but always worth repeating um, is it's obviously networking um, to help you get yourself into a second career. That's in terms of finding out information, finding out about jobs, um, help with applications, help with interviews. And um, I'd say the whole formal side of applying for jobs um, is minimized if you do have networks and are able to get introductions to people um, who may be able to help you move forward with that. Um, so that is what I would say is my um, first point. Do any, of, do any of my other colleagues want to sort of build upon that or is that a, a sufficiently... Yeah. Richard, go ahead. Yeah, okay. Um, the, the other thing I would say is having um, seen clients uh, day in, day out since the pandemic started, um, I've noticed which ones of them have um, had, had a lot more success. And it's simply the more you put into it, the more you get out. So, you know, gone are the days where you can just apply for a couple of jobs and just sit there and wait for the, for, for the employer to contact you and get an interview and get the job. Um, some of my clients have been... Um, you know, on LinkedIn day in, day out, building up networks, arranging uh, Zoom conversations with people, um, applying for loads more jobs than they normally would. Um, and so, so it's literally, it, it really is about how much effort you put into it. And I think um, the clients that do put more effort in are the ones, and we have, we have, I think since this pandemic started, we've heard about at least a hundred people that have got jobs. So people are still getting jobs. It is difficult, but if you put the effort in, I think, 
you'll, you'll see that you'll get the reward. That's my advice. Um, and just, just to add to that, I'd say to, um, to book an appointment with an employment advisor, kind of get an idea of what you could do next, get some more suggestions. And you can use websites like the National Career Service to do one of the matching quizzes, um, which asks you a series of questions about what you might be interested in, where your skills lie, and then it gives you some suggestions of things you might not have thought of before. Brilliant. Thank you very, very much. And, and I'll I'd, I'd just kind of re-emphasize, re, uh, re I think I agree with everything that's been said so far. Uh, but again, if you're specifically looking to change career, uh, and I, I gave this answer before, but look for people on LinkedIn who have done, who've made a similar transition to you and reach out to them because it's they've taken an unusual path to their current job. They are actually quite proud of that and they are more likely to respond to people asking about how they did, did it. Again, you'll get really good advice, first of all, and then you'll get start to build up a network of people who are um, sort of supportive of you making that transition as well. Lovely, thank you very, very much. Now, Amanda, um, Janine has asked, um, what kind of recruitment do you deal with, please? Is it specialised or general? Uh, the simple answer is general. But as I think I said in my session earlier, I'm not sure Janine was there. It's not so much about the types of, uh, it's more about I hire for culture. So the clients that I work with are very much around finding people that fit their company ethos and values. And the thing that I like to do is match the individual to that company. Uh, but in terms, I don't do specialized IT or um, finance roles or manufacturing, for example, but generally I, I will happily talk to anybody. Lovely, thank you very, very much. Um, Suzanne has asked, is there a forthcoming LinkedIn session? Um, the answer to that, Suzanne, is that we have, uh, if you visit our, um, our websites, which is theworkavenue.org.uk and go to our events page, which is very, very easily identifiable from the homepage, um, you will find all our forthcoming activities and that will be all our events, all our webinars, all our workshops. Um, and there will be um, a workshop on LinkedIn coming down the line. Yeah, um, and, and I, I, it's, it's, on the, it's on the 25th of Brilliant. November. Brilliant, because I was morning. going to say, I can't remember the precise dates, but obviously better members of my team than me, namely Richard Linden, has remembered exactly that, um, partly because he's running it, I suspect. Um, so, um, yes, yeah, so uh, the 25th um, of November. So, and, and, and the great thing, our website is very easy to use, user-friendly, and anyone can sign up to any of our activities directly from our website, if that's easy for you. So literally click on the event you want to um, join and you can join it from there. Um, if you prefer to phone us, um, we can do that for you as well, um, or email us, you know, any, of, any route to reach us, they all work. Um, so you don't have to worry whether you have a preference um, for, for one particular type of um, uh, medium or technology. We, we, we'll work with you whichever way you approach us. So please don't worry about that. All roads will lead to Rome um, when it comes to talking to Work Avenue. Can so I if you want to... Add... Oh, sorry, go on. <laughs> go on, Melanie, why not you first, then Richard? Um, can I just add that we're actually running a networking skills workshop tomorrow and last time I looked which was yesterday there were still a few places left so if anybody wants to join me at that um, that's obviously goes hand in hand with LinkedIn and you'll get some of the skills for, for networking particularly in a pandemic and really making use of a virtual networking which is another way of networking and actually works really well at the moment. And I think one of my colleagues, Joe, has actually put the, the web link for our events on the chat at the moment, which you'll all see. Um, so thank you very, very much for that. Um, do we have any other questions? I'm conscious of time. Um, yeah, someone has asked, realistically, employers have so many applications to consider. Honestly, why would they consider me over someone who appears to be the perfect fit for the role? Um, again, Melanie, I'm going to ask you, transferable skills is a... Is a, a it's, it's so central to everything we think about. And um, if, if you don't mind addressing that first, and then perhaps my other colleague can also, not that you'll have any gaps in what you say, but if there's anything else to add. Sure, no. Well, it's really about thinking, what are my skills? And um, certainly we talked about this this morning in my transferable skills session. So if you didn't see it, and you'd like to see the recording, then that will hopefully be helpful to you. Um, but we, it's really about thinking, what are my skills? What skills do I already have? And there's no room for modesty here. So it's really listing those skills and you will have them. You will have them from your work. You will have them from volunteering activities. You'll have them from your home life. You will have them from uh, hobbies um, and, and interests. Um, and really thinking about, okay, 
how can I now use those in a workplace? Um, and if you find that quite tricky to do, ask somebody else, ask a friend, ask somebody who knows you well, what are my skills? I really need to know what they are because I need to be able to use them in the future. And then the next thing is believing in yourself, believing you can do it. So the first part of your question, I think, was something along the lines of why should I know why should they choose me? Well, why not? Actually, if you think of it from an employee's perspective, they just want somebody who can help. So as long as you demonstrate that you have the skills for the job in question, there's no reason why you shouldn't be chosen or selected just as much as anybody else. As long as you make it very clear you have the skills they're looking at looking for, look at the job description, look at the person's spec, make sure you're answering what they're asking, not what you want to tell them. Um, and then there, if there's something about, have I got the confidence? Have I, can, can I really display this, um, display my skills as well as I really want to? Um, we also run a building your confidence um, workshop as well to help you with that. Lovely, thank you very, very much. Um, there's another question which I'm going to ask my colleague Hannah to respond to. Um, Karen has asked a question um, about, again, it's about being um, um, a mature graduate. Um, she would like to know how to apply for jobs where they specifically ask for a minimum number of UCAS points as well as a degree. Now, she says she doesn't have UCAS points, um, but she has a first class degree um, and finds it a bit of a stumbling block. Hannah, can oh. you address that? Yeah, sure. Um, so the um, the type of um, employees that are likely to ask those sort of questions are um, graduate schemes. Um, and for those sort of questions, you could go to the UCAS tariff calculator on the UCAS tariff website and just simply put in the A-levels that you do have and it will calculate how many points they're worth. And, and that hasn't changed. Lovely. Okay, I think, um, does anyone have any other questions? We, we technically have five more minutes. So if anyone would like to um, ask... Emma, what? Sorry, I was just going to say, while, you're, while people are asking yes. those next questions, I just wanted to jump on the previous question, actually. Oh, please um, go ahead, Adam. Sorry, <laughs> please do. Sorry. Um, I just kind of want to acknowledge that actually, you know, you're 100% right with the question. So the question was, you know, um, you know why should an employer look at me? Um, and actually, if you're using sort of the traditional job seeking methods, I don't know if you're on my session, but the, according to Glassdoor, I think there's about 250 applicants per role. Um, and so, you know, you're absolutely right. There's the chances of you being successful through that process um, is less than 2% if you match absolutely everything. Um, and I, I agree with everything that, that Melanie said, by the way, in terms of, you know, showing your value. Um, but again, coming back to kind of, I don't know if you're on my session, but one of the things uh, that I talked about is, you know, being direct in terms of who you approach and who you build relationships with our, with for your net from your network is a really effective way of bypassing that process process so you're bypassing the um sort of the the technology filter which filters out cvs hiring managers um, view cvs for an average for about six to ten seconds so you're kind of bypassing that and you're building relationships up with people who are in the teams and then getting yourself referred in that way and that's how you can kind of start to bypass that process even if you don't have um the the direct experience that some of the other candidates might have adam thank you very very helpful um now I don't Emma, have any. Can I just jump in? Please do. Of course um, you can, someone's Debbie. just asked if Hannah wasn't, wouldn't mind repeating um, what she said about the National Career Service and the mapping function. Um, yeah, sure. So I'll post a link in the chat as well. Um, there's a website called the National Career Service that was set up by the government. And um, it's got different sections on like explore different types of careers where you can click on certain careers and read about how to get into them, what skills are required, and what you'd be doing in those roles. Um, but if you go to um, the skills assessment test, which I'll, I'll put a link on for, it asks you some questions about what you're interested in, what you like and dislike, and then it gives you a series of careers based on that. And then you can click on each career and find out how to get into each and explore them further. Okay, thank you. Anna, thank you. We're running, we, we've literally got a couple of minutes left, so I would ask you to post that link yeah. swiftly. <laughs> Do it quickly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> before the session concludes in, in, in a couple of minutes. Um, so we'll just let Hannah Can I ask a question? That. Please do. If, uh, uh, it's your chance. There's, there's, there's a couple of minutes left for a final question. Who's asking? Hi, Emma, it's Johnny. Ah, Johnny, go ahead. Hi. Um, just to, just out of curiosity, of all the people that have been on the, uh, the, the sessions throughout the morning, it sounds like there's a few people who are looking to start their own. Is there any possibility that Work Avenue could 
if everyone was to communicate what they are doing, then maybe there is people on here who should be connecting and having a coffee with themselves to see whether they've all got different skills. But as a collaboration, who knows, they could actually have their own business. So when we, thank you for that, John, it's a really, really good point. When we ran Defining Your Second Career for the first time last year, pre-corona, it was a live event where human beings, <coughs> pardon me, actually interacted with each other in a, in a tangible touching sort of way. Remember those days? Um, we did just that. We set up a networking group from that session because exactly those thoughts came out of it. Um, and we, I'm very, very happy to do the same. What we can do is um, obviously for people to interconnect and network with each other, I have to have people's permission to be able to do so. Some people are happy to, to give their permission. Some may not be so happy. So we will write to everyone afterwards. And if you respond, um, you know, that you're happy to give your permission um, or that you'd rather not give your permission even, um, then obviously you won't be included, but we can work on the basis that otherwise everyone will. Um, thank you, Johnny, you've given yours, but there's um, about 125 other people who, who, who may also have to, to give a view. Um, but yes, it's a very, very good idea. Okay, now we are, time flies when you're having fun. I, and, and I hope you all have had fun this morning. Um, I hope that you've all found the session um, informative, helpful, useful, um, thought provoking, stimulating, humorous in parts as well. Um, it's, it's been a very full morning. We've covered an awful lot of ground. Um, everyone who has um, um, a, a addressed a session um, has indicated they'd be happy, you know, for you to reach out to them. So, so you know, you know where to find all the Work Avenue team. We're all on email and our email addresses are very public on the website if you don't know them already. Um, so um, you're very, very happy um, to, to reach out to any of us individually. Also, please reach out to any of the other speakers via LinkedIn, probably in the first instance. Again, um, you know, that's the benefit of activities like this. Um, and um, it, it, it's, it's been great. We've really enjoyed having you. Do visit our website. Um, and for any women on the session, and I know there are a lot of us women on this session today, please look out over the next couple of days to our next big event like this one called Women in the Workplace. It's going to be running on the 8th of um, December. It's going to be taking a similar format to this. Um, men are welcome to. It can be a bit intimidating for men. Um, there's a sexist comment if ever I heard one. So apologies to all the gentlemen out there. You're also welcome to join. Um, but it's called Women in the Workplace. It takes place on 8th of December and look out for our marketing and our ads coming down the line very, very shortly. It just remains for me to thank everyone so much um, for joining Joining us today. I hope you've had a lot out of it. Um, and be in touch with us at Work Avenue because we long to be able to help you in any way we can to help you define your second careers. Thank you all Thank you, very, Emma. Thank very you everybody in much Work indeed. Brilliant. All the best then. Many thanks. Bye bye. It's good night Thank for you. me and it's good Thank night you. for him. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Yours to all. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> Thank you very much. Amazing. Thanks, Emma. You're very Thanks, welcome. Emma. Nice brilliant. Really Thank you. Brilliant. Day. Amazing. Brilliant. Thank very you. Good. Fantastic. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Emma. You're welcome. Thank you so much. <clears throat> I could ask everyone now to leave the session. Emma, stop recording. 
Emma, stop recording. 